Hey, I'm Cameron Webb, and uh, we're here with uh, Pro Mix Academy, and we're going to do a mix today. Um, the band I chose to do a mix is called the Runaway Kids. Runaway Kids, it's a punk rock band from uh, San Fernando Valley, and they came to me a couple years ago, and they said, hey, we want to do an EP, and we want to do it with you. So I built a relationship with this band over about a year or two, and been trying to help them out. This song specifically that, that we're, we're working on today, uh, they came to me and said, we got a tour with Pennywise and we want to release some sort of new material. I'm going to play just a little bit of the song so I get myself familiar with it again, and then I said we break it down. Okay. One of the most important things I do when I start with drums or even starting any sort of mix is I listen to other records that I like and the respect that are in similar genres. So I kind of know where the bottom end sits, the high end, the snares, the kicks, and I reference those back and forth. And in the beginning, I'll do it a little bit in the morning, more so than I will later in the day, because I just want to make sure I'm starting off at, at a competitive level. When you look at the tracks, you see my drums are basically... It's, it's, it's the, the drum kit I had here, which is a DW kit, which sounds great. It came from a friend of mine named Ed Udis, who plays in a band called Zebrahead. Um, my drum setup is, is very similar with most of the artists I work with, because to me, I just want to put a mic on every single instrument. So if someone says, hey, I want the ride turned up, I can turn up the ride. It's that simple. Um, so I, have, I think I've got about 13 tracks here, uh, maybe 14, actually. Um, I like to use all my close mics, and then I like to use a couple rooms. And with my rooms, I'll start with a stereo pair, and then I'll also use a mono, a mono room on its own. So when it comes to punk rock, you don't want it to sound too safe. Uh, you don't want it to sound too trashy, because it sounds too trashy. Um, it's, it's, it, it doesn't project the song as, as, as well. And I think uh, a lot of things happened in the 90s when No Effects and Pennywise were doing their records, and they took punk rock from a period where you had your black flags and you had kind of that kind of punk rock that was had a little more hardcore in it. They were a little looser sounding records. And then you took the 90s where we started to slick things up and almost give, I hate to say this, but you gave punk rock a little bit of metal production, heavy, heavy metal production. And the two combined together, uh, I felt like helped the punk rock scene grow a ton, whether it was Bad Religion, No Effects Pennywise, or even Green Day, you look at uh, Dookie, it, it has uh, a little more sl slick element. Um, so to me, I like that sound, and, and, I, and I chase that sound. So let's start with the top here. Let's look at the kick drum. Um, we start with the kick, and, and part of what Warren asked me to do today was to mix this song with only stock Digidesign plugins. So that's what I did. I had originally mixed it a little differently, but I found a way to kind of to, to, to choose, because originally I mixed it and I had a couple other plugins, but he looked at it and said, but you could just switch this over pretty easily, just choose some other Digi ones. And I, I did it no problem, and uh, so that's what we got. Uh, in general, when I start a mix, I start with a kick drum. That's, that's the thing for me. Listen to the kick drum, and I make choices. I make choices of, okay, does it need a little EQ? Um, does it need a little compression? And yes, it does. For me, I need a kick drum to be controlled. I don't want a kick drum hard, soft, hard, soft, too dynamic. I want, to, I want that kick drum when it punches, I want it to hit really hard. I want to hear the solidness of it. I don't necessarily want it to sound overly triggered. I'm not, I'm not big into that sound, even though you'll see that I, that I do use a sample on this song. Um, but I just start, it, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. So with this kick drum, I start with the core kick drum and I'll look at, I'll look at what this, the song needs and I'll take I'll start with an EQ and I'll, comp I'll add a little high end. You can see on this song, I dug away some of the, about 100, 100 I mean 1,000, 1K, so let's call, let's call it 1K. Dug out, add a little high end, add some bottom in, because when you're playing this fast stuff, sometimes it's just slappier. Um, I recorded it on the same console too that we're looking at right here. This is a Trident 80C, it's an amazing console. Great bottom end, uh, the EQs, super hi-fi, it's great. Um, so basically, I basically I'm covering like when I came in, all these drums were recorded through these channels and they're very cohesive. I didn't use other mic pre's at all, just these mic pre's. And you'll see that with my kick drum, 
there's one kick drum track. And that kick drum track is actually a combination of, of two mics that I have out there, the ATM25 and the uh, uh, V12. So I like to bust things because I think the buses on analog consoles like this sound uh, superior than, than busting them in Pro Tools. Like they just do, they do something, and I don't know what it is, and I feel like I get a bigger sound. Um, a lot of people say, well, why don't you record these things separately? And I'm the kind of producer and mixer where I want to commit. I want a band to come in, I want them to hear that kick drum, and I want them to say, that sounds great. Let, let's keep going with that. I don't want to say, hey, later, I'll fix it later. I'm not a fix it later guy because I'm not interested in uh, making a mistake later. So as long as they come in and they're excited about it, then I can bust it together and make it work. And obviously, they trust me. They, they come here because they trust me and then they use their ears and they learn that I'm trying to give them what, what is best for them. So I take the kick drum, I'll EQ it a little bit, brighten it up on this, this occasion. Uh, compressor, um, using the stock Digi compressor, of course. Uh, I don't want to hit it too hard. If I look at here, so it's not overly hitting it. If I, if I, let me see when I take the bypass off. It's not suffocating it. It's just kind of controlling the attack a little bit. And you'll notice in a second that it's, I'm not just going through one compressor. I'm just go, I'm starting with the first channel, which is the kick drum channel, and adding a little control. And then once I uh, get a control that I, I kind of like, I go down and I bust this to a kick sub. I don't like a lot of buses because busing gets confusing. I like to be kind of simple with my busing, but my kick and snare, they need that kind of stuff for me. I bust that to, to another channel, but before I get to that bus, you'll see that I'm also using a sample. It says kick SR, kick sound replacer is what it is. Uh, this kick kick's probably an ATM25 as well. And part of what this kick does for me is it adds a consistent attack. Because I don't want to hear an overly kicky click and then a not kicky click. So that keeps the click um, kind of organized and controlled. Um, I have an EQ on here, but I'm not even using it. I probably was like, hey, do I need to check this out? Or sometimes I'll set it up and I have that on there so I can just be quick. But yeah, I'm not even using anything. I combine those two together onto a bus. Now, uh, the key to this is before I put these plugins that you see here on this bus, I'll actually have them all muted because I'll basically, I want to hear what the kick, kick drum sounds like on its own. It's good, it's full, it's got punch to it. And then I'll, add, I'll start with the compression again. I'll probably start right around here. A little more control. And I put a second compressor on it that maybe has a couple different settings. Maybe the threshold's different. Maybe the attack's different. Because to me, the beauty of compression is when you have a sound and a sound happens and then it goes away really fast. If you compress a sound and you use a, a little bit of a slower release, it makes your s sound sustain longer. So if you have a kick drum that's tick, 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 it, if you can get it to go tick, tick, a, a little meatier, it'll have a meatier sound. So that's that's why I use compression as well. But besides the controlling it, the governor of it, I like to uh, add a little bit a smoothness, a depth to it, which you get from more kind of analog gear, compressors, old tube compressors do it a lot because their releases are slower. So I'll do that and then I'll just start EQing and say, okay, you know what, is this, it's a good sounding kick drum by itself, but in a mix, this is gonna be a little bit too dark for this. So. A lot of times I'll use a, a, a variety of EQs, but I'm using the Digi ones here. So I'm kind of just listening to, I definitely need to brighten it, but sometimes it's good to dig, dig things out too. So you have to basically, let's see, am I even digging out very much on this? I'm doing a, a bit of adding actually. So I'm not digging out a lot on this. I'm basically just adding some bottom and then adding some top, but I'm doing it twice. So I'm going EQ and I'm going into a compressor. So basically, it's compressing, but it's also controlling my EQ a little bit. Going into another EQ, because I didn't think there was enough high end, so I'm adding a little bit more high end, and then I'm going to a final compressor here. And uh, release is 80, where was my first release? Let's see, well, that's the same, I'm kind of using the same trick. Um, 
I listen, and, and part of what I'm doing right now is I, uh, I work on this kick on its own for a while, and then I'll work on the snare, and I kind of build it, and then eventually I'll go back and I'll adjust a little bit once I put the whole kit in. Because here's the thing, when you have it soloed, it's never going to sound like this, and you have to understand, uh, it's, 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 some, it's a couple step process. It's not always like, oh, you mac get this kick like this and you walk away. No, you get it like this, and then you work, and you work on other elements.